कोंकण मराठा ऑन्ट्रप्रनोर्स प्रेजेंट्स चैंपियंस ऑफ इनोवेशन सीरीज हेलो वेलकम टू द सीरीज चैंपियंस ऑफ इनोवेशन सीरीज दिस हैज बीन अ सक्सेसफुल वेबिनार जर्नी एज पार्ट ऑफ द केएमई एंड एलएमपी ग्रुप आज आमचे बरे असा मिस्टर राजेश देसाई फ्रॉम मुडगिरी co-founder and now CEO of Lyra Network Asia. Mr. Rajesh Desai is an optimist with unmatched persistence. He took a life-transforming decision when he took the challenge to start Lyra India from absolute zero. The goal was to establish it as a major player in the digital payment industry. The journey was obviously filled with challenges, hardships and obstacles. But thanks to his passion, clear vision and decisiveness, today Lyra is one of India's most recognized and prominent pay tech partners. Mr. Rajesh Desai, as part of his journey, has won prestigious awards, also featuring in the top 10 CEOs of Digital India and in the top 10 corporate creative leaders. One of the highlights was under his leadership, the company has been part of India's Prime Minister, Mr. Modi's delegation to France, and also as part of the delegation of the French president's visit to India. He was honored by the ambassador of France for excellence he features regularly in national newspapers and media. He has made our country proud by taking UPI across Indian boundaries to France and Europe. Mr. Rajesh Desai, welcome to the KME Champions of Innovation Series. Hey, Kiran, thank you so much. And great to meet you again. Thank you for the warm welcome and the flamboyant introduction, if I may say. You know. uh, it's great to be a part of this discussion where you have a diverse and a distinguished set of audience. It's a sense of pride. Uh, in fact, more sense of pride because you're speaking to your own community where the objectives is remain same or common, you know, in spite of being diverse, in spite of having different functions. The common objective being uh, building a strong and a reliable community for the future. I speak at various events. Uh, I'm a motivational speaker. I speak at colleges, institutes, schools, international stages, national stages. But I guess this, uh, this, uh, this session which I'm doing for my community, you know, brings a, uh, takes me to a different level. And I think it's absolutely unparalleled, you know. It cannot be matched to anything what I speak, wherever I speak, whatever I do. So I'm very happy to be here. And uh, Kiran, thank you so much for this opportunity. I look forward to a very intellectually stimulating session and a spirited discussion as we go on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rajesh. Welcome again. So Rajesh, let's, your journey, and as we have got to know more about in the last few days, is an inspiring story. The incidents from your life reflect an optimist with unmatched persistence, especially the challenge that you took to start Lyra India from absolute zero. Can you help all of us know a little bit about your journey before Lyra and what really led to this life transforming decision? Sure. Okay. So you have two questions here. One is before Lyra and one is the formation of Lyra. I'll come to before Lyra, start with because I know it's a family. Family comes first, and you know, family is a strong foundation which really builds you up in your life. Um, my family, my dad, Madhukar Mukund Desai from Udgeri, is my pillar of strength. My mother, Sudha Desai, is my source of inspiration. My wife is my company of life, Rupa Desai. She stands next to me, ups and downs at all times. And I have two kids, one daughter, Riva, and one son, Rajveer, which are a ray of hope for me and my future my hope for the for life. So having said that, I will not continue with my pre lyra story, but I'll continue with my formation of Lyra story because that's fresh in my mind at this point of time. So this takes me back to 2005 when I was abroad. I was associated with an international company working for seven different countries, had a high fly international job, well settled, made good friends, had an excellent a growth path in the organization had won several accolades, several awards in the international on international forums. Was a great speaker then, as was uh, to be said by my colleagues as well. But then, then, then there is this one day in two thousand and five, middle of two thousand and five, when this happens, there is this one guy, one foreigner, who comes and tells me that India is way way behind when it comes to digital payments or other digital. Well, it did not take me, it did not, uh, I could not sink that in immediately at that point of time, 
But when I went back home, it started sinking in. And I, I realized the gravity of what he had said. And it really hit me hard. Very, very hard. Believe me, it hit me very hard. And that's the day I decided that I take or come back to India forever and start something which will be my passion and my love for my country, you know. And that's the day I started dreaming. And that's the day I, I started planning to come back to India. And believe me, uh, I had a fantastic uh, stay there. Uh, the company was taking good care of me. The company had given me a beautiful service apartments. Um, uh, they used to give me tickets for me and my wife to and fro. I had uh, uh, the domestic helps to help us. I had a club membership, the highest club membership. I was sitting with the likes of the national team members, of the national cricket team members. I used to share dressing room with the top uh, with the national team members, national team members who used to open the bowling, who used to captain their country. So it was a very pleasant life which I had. The car which I used to drive, I, remember, I still remember, this is 2005. India was not open to automobile then. My friends who used to come to meet me uh, to, uh, there, they used to click their photographs sitting in my car. You know, Of course, now everything has changed. You get everything in India, all automobiles you get in India. But such was the life I was living in that country. And then this suddenly happens. And this triggers me off. And this is the only time in my life that I take a one-way international ticket. A one-way ticket back to India. Nothing in hand. Not sure of where I'm going to land. Not sure what's there in the future. Not sure of what's going to happen to me, to my family. Nothing, absolutely nothing. But yes, just with some passion and a hope that I'll do something good and something worthwhile one day. And that's where I started looking for partners in India. I, I explored international partners in digital payments to see if I could get something worthwhile for my country something which we didn't have and something which I could launch in India. And that's, and after a lot of thorough, thorough analysis and a lot of uh, thorough research, I shook hands with the French, my French partners who are based out of France in a place called Toulouse and Paris. I shook hands with them and that's how the formation of Lyra happened. And that's how I launched Lyra in 2007. I joined hands with them uh, in the month of August, 2007, first of November, 2007, I registered the company in India. And that's how Lyra Network Asia was formed. To go back to your first question, life before Lyra. For me, you know, uh, life has, I always like to do different things and also do things differently. That's, that has been a motto of life. Being a Bombayite, probably that, uh, that energy was there, that additional extra energy was there in me. I did my schooling, did my engineering, did my MBA, all my academics. I was equally good in sports, uh, maybe cricket, maybe badminton, maybe volleyball. Yes, I was good in that. I was also good in extracurricular activities. In fact, I went on to win uh, personality contests, fashion show contests on the national level. You know, and then I was offered these Bollywood movies because I was a good actor and a good dancer as well. So I had three, three uh, uh, portfolios right in front of me. One to pursue my academic dreams, one to pursue my sports dreams, and want to pursue my Bollywood dreams. Sports, not sure, a lot of competition. Bollywood, not a, no idea of the future, no idea of the industry, no idea of how it happens. I had to relegate myself to academics. I was quite good in academics as well. But then I took the academics way because of the humble beginning which I had, humble life I wish to live, and then probably the fact that I thought that taking academics to the forefront and taking forward would help me in my, in my future, you know? And those days, I like typical Indians, they used to have engineering and medical only, you know. I mean, that is what you're supposed to do. So I pursued engineering and then MBA and moved on in my academic journey. And that's how I landed in academics. Probably, you never know, I would have been dancing and acting in some Bollywood movie now. Or probably I would have been playing, play, playing football along with Ronaldo or maybe cricket with Sachin Tendulkar. You never know. But then that's my life before, um, before Lyra. I worked in India after my academics for four years. But then being a 20 plus year old guy, you have this ambition of not just growing what you are or what you're doing, but then you also have that innate desire or the innate passion to you know, make some quick money. And then you had this innate desire, innate passion to do quick money only when you're out of India. That's what, that is what was pursued then, which is not the case now. So I started exploring opportunities. And then, then you had this USA, you had this UK, you had this Middle East, people going there every day from India, you know? But then, as I said, I do the things differently. I do not opt for USA. 
I did not opt for UK. I did not opt for Dubai or Middle East. I opted for South Africa or Africa rather, you know, because that is where I thought nobody goes. And that's where I thought probably if I go, I might be doing something different. I settled there. I, uh, I, I reached there. And you'll not believe Sandeep Patel, who's the, who's the coach of the Indian team, not the coach, the chief mentor of the Indian team, was my badminton uh, partner. Roger Binney, who was the coach of the Kenya cricket team, was my next door neighbor. And we used to cook, uh, we used to cook uh, uh, food together. Of course, that was during my pre-marriage uh, days or pre-wedding days. But that, that's how my journey is before Lyra and after Lyra. Interesting. You had a very multifaceted journey. Faceted journey. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know about you. Uh, yeah, so, while, so, while, whenever we decide that, we we decide. and though that clarity is there, right? But it starts exciting at the start, but eventually the journey is already pre always filled with challenges and hardships, right? The founder's vision and decision making at those tough times makes actual difference. So, while we got to know a little bit about what was the journey before? Once you sort of made this decision and went ahead with the formation of Lara India, how that journey has been and how it has sort of blended with the growth story of India? Well, life is never a bed of roses. It's not a bed of thorns either, you know. In your personal life, in your professional life, there are always ups and downs. But what defines you strongly or defines your future is the way you maneuver these ups and downs, how you manage yourself when you're up or whether you down. Your attitude matters a lot. So when I started Lyra, I was a one-man army. Now, of course, it's a fleet of warriors, a fleet of officers. But when I started Lyra, it was a one-man army. Only Rajesh Desai in the picture. With no idea about the competition, no idea about the market, no idea about the industry. Do not believe I had a borrowed space corner office from one of my acquaintances where I used to operate from. I had a broken chair, broken table, a very old laptop, and a very old landline. And that's how I started my journey at Lyra. But of course, um, as you say, challenges when you start business. You know, when you, when you start business, you have this P, you know, P is for product, pricing, planning, promotion, and PESA. If you don't have these challenges, uh, encountered, or if you don't meet these challenges, you are lost. And this is exactly when I started a business, or when I started this company, product pricing, planning, promotion, and PESA were the biggest hindrances or the challenges to take me to the next level. Challenges in the next level, you reach a level, and then you have challenges there. You have different challenges. And this is not P here, it's C, as a matter of fact. And what is this C? Cash flow, controlling owner's fatigue, Customer diverse base and compliances or, in, or compliances which are inefficient or irregular. So this is the C or the challenges when you take your company to the next level. So of course, I went to all this. When I started a company, we started with a tech fin company you know, that is offering technology to fintech company, to financial companies or to banks, only technology company. You know. That's how we started the tech fin company. We started with uh, doing technology for point of sale machines. That is a card machine for Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and all. Eventually, we moved to payment gateway, online e-commerce transaction, and had our own payment switch, had our own payment gateway. That's how we offered the e-commerce space as well. But then, this is not this is not enough. You know, you need to have a vision. And I had a very clear, clear vision for Lyra. That is our being, Lyra being a preferred payback partner, payback payment facilitator. When you offer payment, facility to your merchants or the companies to be, become the payphone. So the becoming the preferred payback partner was my vision. And vision is a very clear image or a mental image of what you want to achieve. Or maybe it's a clear picture of where you want to reach. You know, vision helps you change your dream and open your open some opportunities. That's what is very clear itself. Vision without action is absolutely a dream. And an action without a dream is nothing but just time pass. So based on this vision in mind, we took that leap from, we took the next steps ahead. And then there comes this UPI story. I saw this opportunity of UPI, Unified Payment Interface, which is instant payment, mobile to mobile, bank to bank transactions happening. 
taking it across Indian borders, leveraging on the fact that I had French partners based in France. The decision was to take UPI from India to European shores in France. Let me take you back to question one. When this foreigner guy told me that India is way, way behind technology. But look at what happens now. India, all these big uh, countries like Europe, they're bringing technology to India, but now it's a reverse dream. Times have changed. India is taking its local technology to global uh, boundaries. India has taken UPI to Europe and France. Last year, when Mr. Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of India, was the chief guest on Bastille Day, July 14, 2023, in France, he announced there in Paris that India will do its first UPI transaction on the Eiffel Tower in Paris, the first in Europe. And the finance minister of India, the prime minister, took the name of Lyra, stating that Lyra was enabling this to do this in France. This was July 14, 2023. We are very close to our Republic Day, 2024, just four days away from now. This time, it's the president of France who's the chief guest of Republic Day of India, invited by Mr. Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi had committed then on July 14 that he would even produce, introduce uh, UPI to France. And he had said Eiffel Tower was the first tower, the iconic Eiffel Tower, was the first merchant or the first user it will give up a ticket using UPI. That is what he had said. Then in Paris, they come, the Mac, Mr. Macron, Emmanuel Macron, President of France, comes to India now, next week for the Republic Day. And along with us, we will assist Mr. Modi and Mr. Macron to do a live transaction on the 25th of this month in Jaipur. So what was committed by Mr. Modi will be executed by Mr. Macron and Mr. Modi in India. So that's what, that's what, that is what Lyra intends to do. That is what we intend to do as we move on. So not just domestic and not just local uh, markets or local industries or local local companies what we address. We want to take our technology proudly and with a lot of pride to international boundaries. We want people to remember us. We want people to, uh, to, to talk on the fact and comment on the fact that India is way, way ahead when it comes to digital. And I'm really very proud of that here. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. And it, this, I think this is fantastic timing of our session also that uh, yeah, yeah. such transaction is going to happen just a few days from now on Republic Day. Great, great. So uh, I, I know uh, it, it seems like a very super success story, right? And everything, when you hear about it, looks like everything went fantastic, right timing, perfectly placed, right? But uh, I'm very sure while all this was happening, there must be some tipping point, right? When you actually felt that, uh, is this really going the direction that you wanted it to go, right? Uh, and what was the trigger? How did you overcome that challenge? And what was the trigger that actually kept you going rather than sort of going back? Quite a few people on the audience today. So there are two challenges which people normally face, right? One is moving from a, a job mindset, right? Where you get a, fixed salary every month, right? Moving into an entrepreneurial yeah. group, right? That's the first part. But then again, after doing that also, while the, a very small percentage of people really do that, it's difficult to really sustain many times, right? There's always those tipping points and people turn back and there are few people who really keep going, right? So how did you really overcome this challenge if you faced any and what was the, really the trigger that kept you going, Rajesh? Yeah, yeah, I agree with this. I've got several batchmates, my engineering batchmates, my uh, MBA batchmates, my school batchmates, who have had their uh, tried their luck at being entrepreneurs, but then had to probably, because of multiple reasons, had to withdraw themselves from taking that journey forward. It's been 17 years at Lyra India, 2007 to 2024, almost 17 years now. As I said, you know, I mean, you have ups and downs, positives, negatives. Let me give you an interesting example. You know, information is very important, but what is also very important is experience and examples because they make it stick. They make the information stick. So this was probably around mid of 2008 or early 2008 when Lyra was one year old. And then there was this seasoned professional working in the Indian digital payments industry 
who went on to announce that Daira would not survive in India for even a year. And he was very gungo about that, very confident about that. Well, that I think was a big trigger point for me, or rather a big trigger point for me, because it ignited and reignited me in me the entrepreneurial spirit which, which, which I had started. At that point of time, I was having a real tough time being a one man army, handling operations, handling technology, handling finances, handling information, handling security, everything on my head and my shoulders. And then on the other hand, handling customers and handling competition. So definitely somewhere I was feeling the pain and the strain. And then I was thinking that probably I'm going to turn head some point of time in the first year. Well, I am happy and lucky that this guy re-triggered and reignited that spirit once back in me. The entrepreneur spirit was reignited back in me. It's said that you attempt to fail. So don't fail to make it attempt. You know, bend on the road is not the end of the road. And just if you refuse to take a turn, if you refuse to take a turn, the pain becomes the end of the road. You know, they also said that ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail back. Ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. Keep on trying, keep on trying. You might fail, you fail again. But every time you fail, you will fail better. And then one day, you'll see the hard work giving you fruits. So, what is me going? This is the trigger which I really wanted to pump in my impetus and keep the momentum going. But then if they say that uh, in life, you know, as you said correctly, uh, it is not just talent which takes you to takes you forward. You know, if you cannot plan for talent, excel with hard work. You know, so hard work is something which I got into, ventured into. And hard work is something which I took my steps forward on as stepping stones. You know, it is simply impossible to be the person who's hard working. You know, remember a honey bee, it grows to 20 lakh flowers, collect 500 milligrams of honey. That's real hard work. So our hard work is nothing as compared to that honey bee. So the honey bee are pictureized right in front of my eyes. And then that's what kept me going, going, going. And I, I guess that is what really kept me going, has kept me going till now. It's been 17 years now. I will try my best to continue till the time I can manage and I can continue. Thank you. Thank you, Rajesh. I think that was very interesting, especially for the for the young generation who would be listening to this. Now, because we are talking about the youth and you are talking about hard work, right? So, and especially even from Kokan Maratha, there would be many youth who would be going through this session of ours. So today the youth has multiple options when they step out of a high school or college. And there is an overload of information. So when a student is choosing a career while in college or when he's about to step out, right? What would be your advice to choosing that career or for the journey ahead, right? That's that's one bit. And while we are talking primarily about IT. For someone who is focused on IT and has decided that they will go for IT as a career, be it as a as a job or getting into the market as an entrepreneur. So what do you think should they look forward to from a career perspective? Okay. So your first question is more generic. So I'll answer or respond to this in a generic fashion. Your second question is more towards IT. So it'll be more relevant to IT. Uh, IT aspiring individuals. Correct. So to uh, respond to your first question, to answer your first question, my message to the young guys, boys and girls, or the youth of today, especially since they are from a community right now, my message is that as you prepare to launch yourself into the real world beyond college, or a world of independence beyond high school, first let me congratulate you for having being there where you are. At this point of time, you have had an incredible journey. But now, it is different. You're taking a stepping stone forward. You're putting your front foot forward. No matter in life what the circumstances are, no matter where you live, where you have lived before, no matter the family you are acquainted with, no matter what happened to you, 
in your childhood. That's all beyond your control. That's all past. That's all history. Now is the time to step forward and lead a life that is yours and truly yours for the, for the making. You're actually about to start the greatest improvisation of your life. With no script written, no idea what's to happen in the future, with no people whom you know who will be in the future or place where you go or where you'll be in the future, you'll have no idea, you have no control. But then if you're positive, optimistic, and if you're lucky, and if you say yes, you'll find people who say yes back to you. Never say, why me? Always say, try me. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life you've always imagined. But, other point of advice, you have your mentors, you have your teachers, you have your guides, you have your parents, acquaintances, you have your peers. Listen to everybody. Take guidance from all. At the end of it, it's your life. Go confidently wherever you want to go. Definitely live the life you have always imagined. Is what I can tell you. All my guidance, all my message, for a generic way of life for the future, for the youth of today, and especially for the youth of today. Responding to your second question, Kiran, especially to IT. What's new today is absolutely over tomorrow. You know, when it comes to IT, there are so many things, there are so many new technologies coming up. Generative artificial intelligence, AI, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, robotics, cloud computing, data computing, that's a lots and lots and lots of possibilities. And all are, believe me, all are interlinked, all are intertwined towards each other. You know? if, you, if you ask me, as of today, if you ask me to put on top of the list of all these options which you have, I would definitely put AI, artificial intelligence, right on the top of the chart. I would say that is, it's a general misconception of people that when it comes to AI, they generally used by big tech giants and that's not by normal human beings. But then we as individuals, we don't know that every day, you know, every day do we really routine of lives, right from morning to evening, we use AI who's always assisting us at the back end. Let me give you an example. We wake up in the morning, the youth of today especially, the first thing you do is pick up your mobile phone. Pick up your mobile phone and then using biometrics and face ID, you unlock your phone. You unlock that, you have no idea. But do you know who's enabled that functionality in the packet? It's artificial intelligence. It's enabled biometric functionality at the end, back end and has unlocked the phone for you. Second point, you go to social or media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, all these social media platforms because you want to catch up with what's happened last night. But you realize that suddenly you're only getting those preferred pages, you're only getting those filtered images, or you're only getting what you wanted, and you're not getting not what you wanted. Why? It is because artificial intelligence at the back end has read you already. It knows exactly what resonates with you, with your life, what is that you like, and what is that you dislike. And hence, it only throws to you your likes and not your dislikes. If you travel to office or you travel to go and meet somebody during the day, who do you bank on? You bank on Google Maps. Who's driving at the back end? Artificial intelligence. Google search engine, name it. Everything at the end of the day is AI who's driving you it for you. So if you ask me, if you ask me what's uh, uh, what is that one to aspire for in IT, definitely I would suggest that we should go for artificial intelligence. But even machine learning for the matter matter is all meant to be algorithms, you know. And ML works very closely with AI, as a matter of fact, and it goes hand in hand with AI. So you have all these options ready. It's on the it's on the individual, what he or she wants to aspire and perceive. Yeah, Kiran. 
Thank you. Thank you, Rajesh. In fact, it's interesting that you brought AI up because one of the questions, and I'll sort of break our, divert from our flow here, because one of the questions that was asked on our registrations by one of the youth members was, uh, any advice to the Kokan Maratha youngsters on how to cope up with the onslaught of AI and how to stay relevant? Uh, and if I sort of add my two cents here, I think the question is more because we hear about AI mm -hmm. taking away many jobs, many jobs which are mundane. Even software development to quite some extent, it is being said that would be done by AI. We might only need people to sort of say, review the code. So how, how does a current youngster who has maybe just got in the industry and has this sudden fear that, oh, this job might not be more relevant. How do they cope up with this onslaught? Well, I would take it differently, you know. Technology is never there to die. It's going to stay forever. In fact, it's going to upgrade day by day. What is going to be obsolete is human. If we don't upgrade ourselves and match, match to match with technology. As for jobs are concerned, I, I would say that it is absolutely opposite. It is not going to pull away jobs from a youngster. And as a matter of fact, it is going to give you more jobs. AI is just a tool at the end of the day. It is at your disposal. Who runs the AI? It is engineers, technicians, people like us and you who do that. So to run an AI, to run an ML, to run a robotics, or to run anything for that matter, you still have to be there. They cannot run on their own. You might have a Rolls Royce which runs at 500 kilometers per hour, but then you don't have a driver, it cannot run. Of course, AI is doing that right now. It is having driverless cars also. But then build this driverless car, you still have to have AI engineers. So guys, don't panic. Don't take stress. In fact, what you should do is, you should brush up yourself. You should fine tune yourself for the real world skills, you know. You should, what you should do is, you should do read updated books. You should check on the internet. You should take relevant sessions and relevant coaching, relevant coach, coaching uh, tutors from, from, from specific um, industrial peers, you know, who guide you in understanding what AI is all about and how can build for you or reinforce you rather than rather than killing you down. You know, AI for me is always positive. It's a plus. It can never be negative or a minus. So I think the youth of today, see, for example, remember two two K, everybody remembers two thousand K or two K. Everybody said that all the machines are going to die, people will be out of jobs. But where, really, on the contrary, it went on to build up other jobs. Right. So here we are. We are here. We are having AI, which is actually helping us to give us more and more jobs. So please, let's not panic. That was a 2002K was an interesting example because at that time I was entering the industry, uh, and it. Ah, it, okay, all right, yeah. That we so you have experienced it before this, you know. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so moving forward, I from a. We talked a lot about IT. We talked about IT jobs. Uh, now, in our community, Kokan Maratha community, there are many people who are into businesses for a while, right? And maybe they have done the minimal required IT enablement, right? Thode uh, invoice printing, karche, nalar, transactions automate, thode she. so all those small, small things are done. But really exploring IT to to change the entire potential of the company is not something which uh, many of our entrepreneurs have been able to do, right? Uh, so that percentage is still less. Mm. So any any sort of words of advice or suggestions of how someone can actually ride that wave, right? And change their overall business working model. For example, someone who is into a B2B, right? Still does not think about going to B2C at times because they are not really seeing the power of uh, social media or getting into an complete internet uh, UPI payment modes. So how how do we really sort of, what are the words you can say for these entrepreneurs who are already there? So you've taken the right step first, being entrepreneurs. You've already taken a step forward. Consistency is very important to maintain yourself at par with what's happening around. 
is very important or else you become obsolete. Your competition kills you, tramples you, goes ahead right in front of you. Let me give you an example. Financial technology or fintech has changed the way banking used to happen in India. At its core, it, it has helped owners, businesses, consumers better manage their financial operations. Banking, for that matter, once upon a time, you had to go to branches, stand there in huge queues, fill a lot of forms, and there was a lot of burdensome paperwork to be done, a lot of processing time to be executed to complete one activity. But right now, as a city at Kiran, and as a city here, I can actually go and open a bank account right from my mobile phone. I can actually transfer money from my mobile phone, which is linked to my bank account, to some merchant from Amazon or Flipkart, where I want to buy some goods. I can transfer money from here to anybody whom I want to, probably my daughter who's studying, or probably anybody who's in desperate need of money. So times have changed. IT is ruling the world. Digital is ruling the world. If you are not digital, if you are just digital, you are going to be killed. You're going to be, you're going to collapse. So it is high time that if you're not taking the step, it is, it is high time to take the step. Let me give you a few, few examples or let me give you some statistics since we have opened up this topic. You know, um, even Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the matter, in 2014, and we started this, and he opened the Prime Minister Janadhanu Yojana, P-A-M-J-D-Y. What it means is that banking the unbanked, 65% of India's population today is absolutely rural, which was more 10 years back, you know. Only 35% is maybe urban. And there are 22% of population even today is unbanked. That means they do not have a bank. But then FinTech opened financial technologies or FinTech opened financial inclusion for all these people in the rural areas. They went there, opened accounts for them. And even these rural and tribal people at this point of time are able to do almost all banking activities, which we are able to do in urban areas. So when somebody there who doesn't even need all this, you know, we cannot imagine somebody in Mudgeri would require this probably, or maybe some remote area would require this, but then they're still doing it. And if we don't do it, as I tell you, we will get lost. India is at the peak of technology. India is at the peak of digital payments. India is at the peak of digital enabling technology. If we are not there, we are going to kill. So my advice definitely is that we need to take a step forward. We need to keep the stone rolling and we need to put ourselves into IT or we are gone. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, and I know you are, you sort of ended up talking a lot about India, right? And I know you are very super enthusiastic about India growth story. Uh, and by now, even our audience today must have got a feel of it. So recently, I read one of your tech blogs that had got published. Uh, it talked in detail about fintech's trajectory, its impact in 2023, and on the shaping of the 2024 vision for India. Can you explain a little bit more about it, uh, especially for our audience who plan to venture into fintech? Yeah. So uh, let's since I've touched on fintech and digital digital fintech is financial technologies better known as fintech now it is it is not there in the dictionary i don't think it's still put there in oxford dictionary but it is a very popular word now it is the industry which is going to become the biggest industry in india in 2030 as per ernst and young 10x growth every year that is what is envisaged so what is fintech fintech is basically used to describe new technology to automate the delivery and the use of financial services. You know, at the core, it helps everybody to make their banking operations much easier, more seamless. And if you look at the Indian landscape, the face of banking has phenomenally changed because of fintech. The fintech disruption story in India was not scripted. It's an unscripted story, you know, and it's just picking up day by day and every day. A positive growth has seen several unicorns being born in India over the last few years. In fact, I think 2023 May, India boasted of uh, 11 unicorns. Yeah, I guess so. With a 330 with 330 billion valuation. Uh, so 110 unicorns with 330 billion evaluation. You know, 
three thirty billion dollars evaluation. Such is the size of the growth of India. India has seen that uh, the startup in the startup phase, India is number three at this point of time. So even the startups have grown. The world is recognizing India. The world is seeing India what is doing. And look at UPI. UPI did staggering one point seven billion dollars last year. Oh, huge! India did fifty. Uh, India did eighty nine million digital transactions last year, followed by Brazil twenty nine million, China seventeen million, Thailand six million, uh, sixteen million, and Korea nine million. What I am saying is, of these five top countries, the next four don't even match to the total of what India has. That is the growth of India. What it speaks of, it speaks of massive adoption by the Indian scenario or by the Indian diaspora. The Indian people, the Indian consumers, the Indian merchants, Indian organizations have already adopted this explosive growth of UPI and digital payments in India. And it is growing and strongly growing. If you look at India, India is 144 crores uh, population. Internet subscribers of those are 120 crores. Huge, especially because of uh, ease of ease of availability of internet, uh, economical cost of internet. So you have 120 crores of population connected to the internet. You have 114, 114 crore mobile subscribers, 80 crore e-commerce subscribers, and you have 65 crore smartphone users. Such is the volume of growth for India. And for us, I think as a community, as businessmen, as entrepreneurs, we really need to leverage on this. If they are growing, it shows and it gives an opportunity for us to grow as well. At par with them, piggy bank on what we are doing. So you, India is a huge, uh, gigantic story which is followed all over. And with UPI, contactless payments, um, FinTech has changed the way the world perceives to be. When I speak now, when even Indians speak now on global stages, you know, the way they look at Indians is very, very different. The way they perceive Indians and the Indian story is very, very different. There's a high amount of reflection or a high amount of respect when we go and speak there because now they believe in us. They believe in what we do and they believe the fact that what they can, what we do is also what they can do. So all these countries are looking at replicating India's digital payments growth story, India's fintech story. But believe me, if you actually look at fintech, early 1915, United States was the one who actually started it with the credit cards. You know, it was 1950, but then they are still there where it was. Maybe they went to stocks trading and all, but not real gigantic leap, which India has taken in the last 10 years. India really saw fintech growing, emerging, and phenomenally revolving from 2010. So it's a great way for us. Excellent. I think that sort of helps everyone know what is the potential that is still yet to be explored in the next 10 years from fintech perspective. Thank you. Thanks for those views, Rajesh. Uh, one of our next questions that I see is, and maybe Rajesh, will, I'll just talk a bit about KME here. So, uh, question is from Pritesh Rani Karwar. How can thousands of Kokan Maratha entrepreneurs who have achieved success across the world come together to strengthen the community in a real and strategic way? And he has said, for example, before the webinar, I think Rajesh, he, he is not aware about you, uh, but even this webinar might not give an opportunity to directly meet. So for all, for everyone here in the audience who has these questions in mind, I'll just talk, touch about KME and let me just share a half a minute video here. Introducing KME Connect, a unique way to grow your business and have your community at the same time. Whether you're looking for vendors, consultants, or you have a job opening, KME Connect is a one-stop solution to find trusted references. KME Connect, coming soon. So just to give a background and many of many people, many one in the audience must have seen our webinar series, right? But uh, I'm not sure how much you have been able to sort of get all the communication related to KME. 
But the webinar series is just one of the things that we as a group have been doing. In fact, we had our meet of a good amount of entrepreneurs that met at Thani recently. So we are sort of coming together and bringing people whom about whom we were not even aware. In fact, to the question that was asked by this young youth, Rajesh Desha, I think even I was not aware about him, right? Though maybe I had heard about Lyra Network, but was not aware there's someone from our community. So we have, we have sort of started this outreach. So do go to KME Rise. There's a site that we are there and we'll try, we'll share the information at the end of this webinar. Try to get in touch. We are finding out different ways how some of the budding entrepreneurs or who wants to look for ideas, look for man, mentors, can connect to those right people in that specific industry or domain. That's in fact one of the main purpose of KME as a group. So uh, do do reach out to us. We are there on LinkedIn now. We are there on, we have a website and we'll also share the email ID at the end. So just with that pause, uh, Rajesh, coming back to you. Uh, I know we talked a lot about the professional journey. We talked a lot about Lyra. We talked about India. Uh, just about maybe a few minutes, would like to know a bit about you as a person. And very casual questions and you feel free to answer it in maybe just a single word or so. Yeah. I'll call it rapid fire because uh, I want your answers that just okay. stop. So, right? Don't have to think. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, good. Your inspiration. <laughs> inspiration, I will not name one person, but people who have gone through hell and yet are very positive inspire me a lot. They prove to the world that you can actually turn pain into power. Excellent. Most proud moment. Most proud moment? Well, I have won several awards during my college, during my academics, and during my uh, work. Only one. Life. Only yes, one. but then, no, then that's not a proud moment for me. My proud moment was the time when my dad, Madhukar Rishai, got felicitated by the chairman and the managing director of Central Bank of India. And I believe for me, that's the most proudest moment of my life forever. Most important trait of a person. I learned this from my mom and my wife. Forget and forgive. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. How do you spend your free time? As I said, I've got two kids. One daughter, one son. And when I have some free time, I spend my valuable time with my kids as well. And just for information, because we just don't talk about academics. My, both my children come into a lot of television ads. So we talk about that as well, besides academics, you know. So it's a fun time when I talk to them. Interesting to know. A book that you can read again and again? I'm not a great fan of books. But believe me, from my childhood, what I've loved is Phantom, the ghost who walks, you know, the guardian of the innocent and a fighter of all types of justice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think the book that you read again and again sort of will become irrelevant after a while, maybe. maybe. Correct, yes. Podcast that you can watch again and again or hear again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, favorite company dish? Oh, wow. Nustia Reva. Nustia, Nustia Reva. I'm fine. Sungar Bhajile, Paplet, Sumai. I love those. One of your favorite songs that makes you feel like a teenager. I know you still are a teenager, but one of your favorite yeah, songs. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm an absolute teenager. But um, the song, which is your this is the question, give me some sunshine, give me some rain, give me another chance. I'm going to grow up once again. That's my favorite song. Beautiful. One thing that you love about Karwa? Oh, I love everything about Karwa. The deep connection, the sense of belonging, everything about Karwa. Is very close to my heart. If you're an opportunity, I'll go there every day. Any so now you're talking about Karwar, and I know this is not a question that has come up right now, but a question that has come maybe earlier many times on our forums. Right? Uh, from there are people who uh, earlier it was a time when people had to go to cities, right, to make an opportunity to start a business, right. Now all the towns or the second tier towns that are there in our country are themselves sort of opening up to different opportunities. So for someone in Karwar who wants to venture into business, right, without maybe leaving the city, right, without going out to a metro city, right, 
uh, any any thought that you have on that Rajesh? Yeah, I'm I'm sure that every every place you stay, every place you visit, every place you are into, always is opportunities. It's just a matter of finding it out at the right time, at the right place. Karwa is full of opportunities, Karwar is full of business, no doubts about that. But how do you harness how do you harness that? You know, Karwa comes not in an urban area, we come in an urban area, you know. We are a group here, we are a KME group here. So I guess um what we need to do is, you know, um, we need to harness our entrepreneurial spirits. Probably for Karwar as well. You know, if you look at India, let me give you stats since we are talking about this. There are 594 million entrepreneurs in the whole world. India leads that gang with 104 followed by China and USA. So India is already leading that gang of entrepreneurs globally. We already have that in our blood. Somebody needs to unwind that for us. You know, and probably we as a community can do that. You know, actually, if you ask entrepreneurship, Fostering entrepreneurship within our group is not just about creating business. It's about creating a culture of innovation, enabling risk-taking, you know, gui guiding, mentoring, training, and continuous cross-functional collaboration that can actually propel our community, Homkan Marada community, to great heights, to newer heights. You know, it is it is unlocking the potential of every individual, be from Karwar, be from Bombay, be from everywhere in the community to drive innovation growth and success. You know, if you look at entrepreneur, the word, I'm not sure whether how many people know this, but entrepreneur is a French word and we are a French company, you know, so that, that's the reason why I know this. Entrepreneur is a French word. It's probably coined by the uh, economist John Baptiste, which is usually translated or means adventure. So, you know, an entrepreneur is always on an adventure. He's adventurous. He always, and if, if you, this takes me back to my college days in MBA, where I had this Peter Drucker, who said that entrepreneur always reaches, or sorry, always searches for a change, responds to it, and exploits it as an opportunity. So, you know, believe me, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Karwar, Mumbai, whoever it is, there's definitely a lot of business lying there. There's a lot, definitely a lot of entrepreneurship lying there. A lot of individuals, but just need to unwind themselves, you know. So, I think as a community, let's collectively harness our or let's harness our collective entrepreneurial spirits and lead our group to newer horizons. That's what I strongly feel. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. I'm just checking if we have if we have any questions. Uh, you know, Thomas Elva Edison, he also said, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. You know, so that's a phenomenal statement which he made after having tried his invention and failed 10,000 times, you know. So we need to try. I think we need as, as individuals, organizations, as people, or as a community, I think we all need to try and see where we can lead ourselves to. But I see definitely see ourselves growing beyond where we're expecting to. It's just that we need to unwind ourselves, unlock ourselves. Rajesh, you have been an active sports enthusiast also. And just I just re recollect that while about to close the session. Uh, but you, I recollect you saying in your own words that your sports and your extracurricular activities have also helped you fine tune the real world skills, right? And I think today, with early morning, we are talking about the Mumbai Marathon also. So today, there are many initiatives like Kelo India, right? Where sports, apart from cricket, is gaining prominence, right? And again, as I was talking about Karwar, the growth in the sports is happening in the different small towns of India. So anything that you would like to talk about being involved in sports, especially in the next 10-year uh, horizon from an India perspective, because that's the other thing that I'm hearing and reading at many places, that sports would be the big thing in India in the next 10 years. Absolutely. Sports was the big thing everywhere in the globe, including India. But now, I guess we have realized what potential it has for all of us. And that's why you have you see these premier leagues for cricket, badminton, volleyball, kabaddi, and whatnot, you know. So everybody has realized the importance of sports. You know, for me, when I was in uh, Africa, my as I said, my in my dressing room, I used to spend time with these national players. And the energy which I used to imbibe from them used to be phenomenal. You know, a champion is somebody who gets up when he cannot. This is what I learned from them. So sports or playing multiple sports 
has enlightened my life and has made me a firm believer of integrity, teamwork, and ethics. You know, besides active in sports, you know, I told you the, the early part of the day also that today we had the Starter Marathon. You know, for me, I have also let marathons be an essential part of my active lifestyle. So I missed it today because of this session, but then marathons has definitely been an active part of my lifestyle. It has really helped me and I can help all of us to develop a very positive, a very fresh outlook on life. It has taught me how to organize my time and build extremely healthy relationships. That's to do with sports. Sports is very important from a physical, mental ability to develop yourselves. Extracurricular activities. I told you I used to win a lot of competitions, national level also for personality contest, fashion shows, extemper competitions, verbal competitions. So participating, winning, even losing in these extracurricular activities gave me some amazing opportunities to explore some several range of interests and brand new passions from extensively strengthening my mind to promoting better time management skills. These activities and schools, uh, sports as well as extracurricular activities help me fine tune what we call as real world skills. And these skills are the skills which I put to use even today when I put this to my professional usage. So sports definitely, extracurricular definitely is something you need to ponder over and work over besides, besides uh, uh, only academics, you know. Um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Absolutely true. I think the younger generation has realized that and I think uh, they want to be the champion who will get up when, you, when, they cannot, when they cannot, you know. See, it's like life is like a boxing ring. You know, defeat is not announced when you fall down. Defeat is announced if you refuse to get up. So I think it's time for us to be champions and sports definitely will help us unwind that champion potential within you. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, Rajesh, before we, we are sort of sharp on time, uh, we were planning to have one more guest speaker, but he could not make it uh, due to a change in schedule at the last moment. Uh, any final words of advice for the Kokan Maratha entrepreneurs and also to the youth of the community? Any final words of advice before we call this a day? Okay, so, so we are short of time and we are summing it up. So summing, summing it up from a mentorship, uh, from mentoring professionals, on their journey towards progress, to traveling extensively. You know, I've traveled 17 countries in the world. I have found myself learning and growing every day with them all throughout. So I think learning is a constant process. And we need to learn. We need to unlearn every day if we want to constantly uh, improvise ourselves. You know, so I think what is very important for the youth of today, as I told earlier, is you need to be confident, self-confident, and work and run confidently in the direction of your dreams. And always live that life you have always imagined. I think it's very important from a physical, a digital, and a digital perspective. And I'm sure being a part of a community, I can see a community definitely growing stronger. Um, what you guys are doing is just phenomenal. The event which you had a couple of months ago and this seminar is something which really speaks of the volume of aspirations and the volume of passion you have to uh, to to explore what we do and to really build up on what our community has been doing. So, you know, kudos to you and kudos to the entire team of KME. Excellent hard work, excellent work on whatever you have done. I wish you all the very best. Thank you, Rajesh. Thanks a lot for your time. I think you had a very inspirational journey and very much relevant to what's happening right now in the country and in the world outside, especially from a fintech perspective, because fintech, AI, they are not just things for the technology geeks anymore. That's something that's going to be part of each and everyone's life. Thank you. Thanks again, Rajesh, for your time. It was wonderful speaking with you. And from a KME perspective, we'll definitely reach out to you again. I know there are a lot of youth who would like to know more or have specific questions, and that's where we'll help them connect with you. Thanks, Rajesh. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you, KME, for this opportunity. Really wonderful speaking out here. A lot of pride in that. Thank you so much. Yeah, so this is the website that we have, kmerise.com. Please make a note of it. You'll also see it in all the social media where we are sending those messages. You will see a connect with us button where you can actually register, connect with us, post your questions here. 
and we'll try to get back to you right and you'll get to know a lot more about what is happening what is already happened as part of the overall kme group on this website so do stay connected thank you all for being here and here with the, here getting participating in this session wait to hear more from us and we welcome you all to kme again thank you thank you thank you so much